our next speaker, another lady, uh, Renal Koch from the Education Faculty. She is a registered counsellor for the Health Professions Council. <coughs> she has been employed as a lecturer in the Department of Educational Psychology. And then she's been a lecturer at the University of Louisville since 2013. She's also currently um, started a PhD study. Good luck. And then her research interests include adolescent female sex sexuality, sexuality education, decision making, life skills, life orientation. And her title of her presentation is How e teaching could lessen the load of larger classes. So, Renal, do you want to come up? I've been running around this morning from one place to the other, so I don't know who I'm talking to this morning or this afternoon. Um, I wasn't here when um, people were introduced, but I'm hoping that what I will present will be helpful to you. And I hope that you can see clearly. I just I was at the back there and I see that it's not that clear, but I'm hoping that you will be able to see what I um, want to present to you. I'm just going to start my 15 minutes time that I have. Um, so yeah, I'm Renal Koch. Um, it's a privilege for me to speak with you this morning and um, I just want to quickly tell you that yesterday I counted, I, I taught 1,153 students this year. So um, I actually expect a little applause there. But no, I'm just kidding, but I'm, I'm guessing that that is the problem that most of us sit with. And um, this is a picture from Google Images, by the way. It's not my class or me presenting, but it's just, this is what it looks like and, and we have to teach large numbers and I think that is what e-learning has, has helped me with um, the most. So I've been on contract for about five years and I've been permanently appointed since last year. So um, since I have started I have learned a lot and whenever there is training available I attend it and Cara know me, Cara, Carolyn knows me by now. I always um, ask advice and I've learned how to deal with these large numbers and, and um, how technology can help me to do that. So I just quickly want to, to mention that part of the IOP is um, that we want to use technology to make, um, to make learning more meaningful. And I think that that is something that we can do um, if we challenge ourselves as lecturers and um, challenge the students as well. And I'm going to show you how I did that. Um, so that's just a quick introduction. First of all, I wanted to mention that I use it Canva and I use that for a variety of um, things and there are certain advantages, certain challenges that I'm just quickly going to mention. So normally I share my slides, my PowerPoints with the students on there. And um, the, the, I think the biggest advantage is that sometimes my students are pregnant, they are in hospital or they have um, other difficulties or can't come to campus, they might be on tour, they might be abroad um, or such as um, in, in times uh, at, such as a fees must fall, um, it's accessible from anywhere on the planet. And I always tell them that, um, that 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 gives them no excuse. They can't tell me that I didn't I didn't attend classes or um, I couldn't I couldn't be on campus because they can access the content from anywhere, and they can go to McDonald's and and get free Wi-Fi there if if all else fails. Um, a public library as well, so I don't think that, that internet ac access is necessarily um, such a big problem anymore. Um, E-assessments are always make and also make use of online tests and quizzes and it's handy with large numbers because, and, and students also have instant access to their results. That's if it is multiple choice tests and quizzes that, that is set up. I also mark some of it myself so then they obviously have to wait a bit longer for their results to come through but they like the fact that they can quickly do an assignment or assessment online and get their uh, results. That's the way that our students are. They want quick feedback so that helps a lot and then um, it's easy uh, there, there are class lists that, that are easily downloadable so I make use of that for um, turn it in as well because when I have to add learners to turn it in you have to send all of them emails so in that in that sense um, to, to get access to the students their names their numbers and their email addresses that's something I use often 
And then statistics, how many times the students have access, accessed the sites. Um, I mean, they can't come with excuses that I did hand something in because it's online. I can see whether they did it or not. And um, I can also, um, I, can, I can tell them that I know how many times you access in Canva. I can even see who the students are who have never accessed in Canva by the end of a term or the end of the first term. And then I can, I can scare them a little bit by saying that they need to start going on onto the site to download their notes and start to, to prepare for the exams. And it saves paper, the environment, printing money. Um, so I think that those are some of the, the biggest advantages. I do sometimes have students who, who um, on, the, on the challenger side, who tell me that they want a hard copy. They want something in, in their hands. So they want me to provide textbooks or um, copies for them. That, that does happen, but I think these days it's, it's just the way that, that we are operating. We're trying to save uh, money printing um, the, the environment so we, we make use of online um, services. And if they did, really do want to go and print their slides, they can do that. And I also show them how to print um, handouts so that they don't go and print out slides, each slide on a separate page, that they can print maybe eight slides on one page. Um, and then sometimes they say that access to internet and computers is a problem, but I, they also have um, access to computers, Wi-Fi um, is available on campus, and I think that's just going to get better and better. I, I see the emails that Fiber is being installed. So, yeah, data, they say data is expensive, but um, I think that's sometimes more of, more. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit of an excuse at times that I think that is used, because um, on campus we do have um, the Wi-Fi that is freely available. So um, I also make use of emails and Google Calendar. Whenever I have a student who wants to come for consultation, I set up a, an, a Google Calendar appointment so that the email is sent to the student so that I also have a paper trail of um, who I saw um, or consulted with or supervised. Um, that's to, to, yeah, to, to make sure that, that I'm also accountable and um, to make sure that students remember their, their um, Appointments, um, and whenever there's a problem, I can search through my emails and exactly see what I communicated with the student. So that also helps to protect me and the students, because sometimes students are angry or they, they say certain things or they want, want to make certain, not accusations, I don't often come across things like that, but it is good for us as supervisors, as lecturers, to have a paper trail, um, just to keep ourselves safe. Um, and, and also what I do is I let the students submit the assignments in, in emails as well. And when they submit, I reply by saying, thank you for your email, I received it, and I put it in a folder immediately. So I have access to, to all my assignments, which, which are in folders, and that helps me because it's not stacks of boxes in my office, and I can access it years after. And I can also say to the student that if you did not get a reply, from me I did not get your assignment so you must follow up because in the past when I did move around with boxes full of paper they told me I did hand it in um, and you might you, you must have lost it so that is now not a possibility anymore <coughs> they must follow up and I've never had a problem with this and if you have large numbers um, you can set up an auto reply which states that thank you for your submission I did receive your email because you know that you don't in time, so then um, you don't have to type out all those emails yourself. Then um, it's also easy to share with your markers. If you have marking assistants, you don't have to, they don't have to come in. It can be a person from anywhere on the globe. You can share that with them in maybe a Google Drive, and they can access and, and help you to assess the, the assignments. Am I running out of time? Um, seven minutes, so I, I, will, I will move on from there. But what I mean is it's just my much, much easier um, to share information. Of course, with the permission of the students, I always ask them, this is the person who's going to assist me with marking, and um, do I have permission to share? Then they, they do uh, give me permission. If they don't, then I, I mark it myself, which I obviously also
course, I of course do. Then um, what I have done this year is last year I was, I always say I was forced. Part of my probation was um, having to design my own e-portfolio. And at first it was something that I didn't really find enjoyable. Um, but uh, uh, part of, of probation was the, uh, the professionalization of teaching and learning. I had to do, I had to come up with my own e-portfolio. E and it was such a wonderful experience for me that this year I also forced my third year students to create their own e-portfolios and um, it was an amazing experience so it was an assignment everything that they did they had to add to their e-portfolios and I assessed that and I'm still busy assessing that and I am ecstatic to see the results and um, I have this one site that I asked a student permission on to just uh, show you um, one of my students created this site and this is what all of them had to do it's more than 200 students who now have their own e-portfolios so I also forced them to start to become more tech savvy and to face their fears because apparently I'm a millennial I'm not sure I, I feel too old and I think I am too old to be a millennial but um, and I don't even know the, the dates I've tried to search that and there are discrepancies but my parents um, my dad is almost 80 and my mother is almost 70 so they are quite older than I am they had me very late in life and I always have the idea that they think they can press a button that will make the device explode um, I literally get that idea so millennials aren't that scared of technology whereas um, it seems to me that some sometimes people are scared that they're going to break something or that when they press a button everything's going to crash so my students I found are also at times like that they are scared of technology Technology. So when I introduced this to them, they were very um, apprehensive and they were scared. They didn't really want to do this. Um, but in the end, as you can see, each one of my students now have an e-portfolio. And I tell them that it's like an online CV. It's not a, 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 um, an assignment that gathers dust in my office. It's also not an assignment that is in my folders, in my inbox, that's lying around for no purpose at all. This is something that they will use for the rest of their lives. Um, they have been very creative, taken pictures of themselves, and they actually celebrated their uniqueness and who they are and their accomplishments. And some of them said that even though they they knew that this was part of who they are, the moment that they, that they put it on a portfolio or they showcased that, they started to feel pr proud of who they are and what they accomplished. So they had um, tasks, I, I asked them to create their own bio sketch which you can see here. I'm just very quickly going to show you. This is where the student told me who he is. There is beautiful pictures of what he's passionate about. Um, he's sporting. Um, he, he's also a coach. And then um, I gave them tasks such as students' learning needs, how to understand your students better, who your students are, um, their prior learning. And then they also had to incorporate theory that I have introduced them to since their first year. Um, and they had to make that part of their conversations that they are having um, as part of their e-portfolio. And um, yeah, as I said, people can now contact them through their e-portfolios. So I tell them that it's like an online CV. Um, and and um, yeah, it's something that they can update for the rest of their lives. And also, the students can also access lesson plans, exam papers that they had to um, design so they can share that with one another and upload one another's work um, so that they have an entire year planned for the future. So in that way, it makes it easy to share. It's vibrant. I, I, I said that they can use um, Google Sites or Wix, but as uh, the, this student, specific student, um, used Wix, and you can see, uh, look, that's his hands, he's typing on a computer. So they were honestly very, very creative. And I got goosebumps most of the time when I opened their work. I felt so proud of them. And um, 
you know, I'll just, sorry, I just want to go back to my... So, um, yeah, their voices, to, to incorporate their voices, um, I'll, I will just quickly, I know it's very small, so I'm going to read to you, but um, this is also where I use Google Forms, where I ask them, what was this experience like for you? So also, um, then each and every year, I can get feedback from my students, and I can assess myself, and also to see whether what I'm doing in class is valuable, and what I can change next year. So, they said to me, when I first started doing the ePortfolio assignment, I was slightly apprehensive, I didn't really like it because it was something that something new that I had never encountered before however once I started putting my final work onto the actual website I had so much fun with it this assignment allowed me to be creative and give our own flair which often um, is not allowed in assignments it is definitely convenient for when I start teaching and it's something that I look forward to sharing with people because after I was done with it I felt so proud of myself so thank you for showing us this innovative and creative way of interacting with people. Just two more, I'm going to read. The ePortfolio was an enjoyable challenge. Challenge. The, uh, the process of, the, of creating the website was a bit challenging at first, but the end result was amazing. Seeing what we've created on this online platform leaves one feeling accomplished and professional. So the ePortfolio has been one of my favorite tasks that I had completed this year. And then the last one that I'm going to read is the ePortfolio was one of the hardest and most challenging assignments to do. Uh, whereby we applied our own information and made it comp as comp comprehensive as possible or comprehensible. In addition, the theoretical knowledge that we had to apply on which we acquired from first year was useful since we had a chance to think deeply about our past learning experiences. It helped me grow by understanding the importance and the level of recognition that you could gain by having your own website and how accessible the internet really is. The ePortfolio really gave me an opportunity to put myself out there in writing and this was a very exciting journey. So most of, mostly the students gave very positive feedback and there was a there was a clear um, yeah, I have to be done now. So, um, sorry, I, I will just quickly try to finish. Um, I, I, was, I was so nervous at the beginning that I put on my heart rate monitor so I can get points for vitality. Um, my heart rate has slowed down a bit now, but yeah, my workout for the day is done. So, um, anyway, so these are my students' uh, feedback, and as I said, challenging but rewarding. Um, there's also a student last night I asked, is there anyone who wants to send me a video on um, what, what this experience was like and I can just quickly, if I'm allowed, go and catch it up. Hello everyone, I'm Lee Jason Samuels, <laughs> I'm from the University of Western Cape, doing my degree in education. This video is why I had my thoughts on the people for your plan as an assignment in the module method of life orientation. I think that it was extremely innovative, it was extremely necessary, and also informative. Since the world is moving toward a more paper system, it would only make sense that the education system also moves uh, into that direction. Therefore, it was very exciting to build an entire profile on yourself and then put it on a website, also along with your um, researches that you've done, and also how passionate you are about these authors and, and research. So if I feel that it was very necessary and I, I recommend this to the education system. So I don't think maybe, I don't, sorry I don't know why that's, um, that, that, that person is on his side now all of a sudden. But um, yeah, it was, it, it's, it's not that often that students will tell you, thank you, this was a wonderful assignment. Um, I, one, yeah, I can advise others to do the same. So that I think very positive feedback. And then lastly I can just tell you about Kahoot that I also use in my classes. Um, it's an online platform that I can give you more information on if you maybe wanted to make contact with me if you if you have never heard of this. Um, it's a it's a wonderful uh, way for each student in my class, even if there are 500 students, they can access the lecture um, via their cell phones. They get a pin, they log in, and then I can ask questions and they each person can give me answers. So that's a way for a thousand learners or students to be involved actively involved in a, in a lecture. It's a way of keeping roll call also because then I can see who was in class 
because you can afterwards download each and every person's response. So uh, the students love it. There's music. Uh, they they love to sign on. They, they can create their own nicknames if you allow that. You can, of course, of course say to them they should um, add their, their um, student numbers. But I think it's, it's, it's a wonderful way for the student to be actively engaged. And there are even winners at the end. Um, so people who had the right, the most right answer. So I use this as formative, summative assessment. There are advantages and challenges that I'm not going to mention now because I don't have time. And there, I, I have quite a bit more to say, but I'm going to have to stop. Um, so, yeah, I can just maybe tell you if you wanted to access my ePortfolio and see what I have, how I have incorporated um, technology in my teaching, I can send it to you. There's my email that you can um, you can send an email to me if you wanted to um, me to give you more information on something that I've mentioned because I know that um, 15 minutes is, is not a lot of time and. and and I don't even know if, if some of you know what an e-portfolio is. So I've maybe spoken about things that you don't know uh, much of. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. Um, I would love to share more. And uh, if you have questions, you are welcome to, to, to um, send those to me. So thank you. If you have any questions, we can maybe do with them. Thanks. Thank you very much for now for running over from your other workshop.